Renovate to sell. Love it or list it. We've all seen those shows on HDTV. Should I renovate before I sell my home? Will I get more money when I sell my home? And will it sell faster if I renovate the kitchen and the bathrooms? You also might want to buy a house that's older and put the money into the renovations to have a brand new interior of that home in an established neighborhood. But where do we start? Today we're answering some of those very questions and we brought in an interior designer and specialist Bridget Ray from Bridget Ray Interior Design. All right, Bridget, we're gonna put you on the spot. So what are you seeing as far as the top design trends? Cause I know it was agreeable gray for many years, but I'm so sick of gray. Color, kind of the up and coming thing now. You saw a little bit of with kitchen cabinetry bringing in a secondary accent color, say for an island. Some things happening with the greens and the more natural, neutral tones, but also bringing in actual more vibrant color as well, going a little more bold. You know, that speaks to, to my heart because my thing actually is color and pattern. Bridget and I have been partnering up on some clientele for purchasing older properties, right? Mm -hmm. As well as people that might sell their home in the future just get a jump start on those renovations so we're excited to share some of that information with you today so what would you say is your top three tips for someone doing a light renovation biggest impact by far i think is is paint yeah i love that because i see so many white wall houses now and they're mm -hmm. just kind of stark mm -hmm. and you can have this spot for a beautiful artwork Absolutely. or yes. just an accent wall like a dark one with those wood slats it looks pretty cool yes Yes. So whether it's something that's more traditional, adding a single element of something bold can really make a, a space come to life. Next, you can do lighter renovations in a kitchen, replacing a countertop, painting the cabinets, or even just changing out an old style backsplash. Tip number three, I would say flooring. You know, whether it's um, getting rid of old carpet or the old laminate floors that sound hollow when you walk across them. Yeah, I hate it when I go into a house and there's like seven different kinds of floors and... It just mm -hmm. it doesn't really flow, you know, like like right. these new homes. It's all consistent. I would also say light fixtures, where you get some fancy light fixtures, really jazzes up the space and makes people feel like it's a more modernized space. All right, let's talk numbers for a second. What is an approximate budget range that an average size home, four bedroom home, 2,500 to 3,000 square feet that needs just a light freshening up, we're not talking gut job. What can people expect to spend on something like that? So something of that level, perhaps it's entailing a fresh coat of paint on all the interior walls and maybe replacing some flooring in a couple of rooms. I would say somewhere in the range of 20, 25,000. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's, it, you know, percentage of home value. If it's a $400,000 home, you wouldn't be spending a hundred grand on that. Right. Right. But if it's a $2 million home, the quality needs to be Yes. you know, higher up. Yes. So uh, I see that too. Sometimes when people try to do renovations in very high end areas and they skimp out in just the wrong area, like the refrigerator, it's got to be that high end refrigerator or something like the type of flooring. It's got to be a nice quality mm -hmm. flooring. People see that. And when you've done it already and you chose the wrong thing, that can be worse than if you didn't do anything at all. Okay. And then next category, what is the budget range that someone would expect to do a kitchen and a bathroom, master bath, primary bathroom and kitchen. Hopefully they could save the cabinets, right? With a high end painter taking that same house, nice area, great lot, great neighborhood, but it really has a dated, dated kitchen and mm -hmm. primary bathroom. What are we talking in that range? Before a mid range renovation where you're not necessarily going in and moving plumbing or perhaps a, a couple of new appliances, reusing the existing cabinetry maybe you're painting them you know new countertops new backsplash and some new decorative lighting and, and new paint you could probably expect somewhere in the range of 40 45 thousand for mm -hmm. that kitchen and as for a, a master bath same situation where you want to reuse the existing cabinetry not reconfigure the footprint of the room perhaps new tile in the shower for example maybe some new plumbing fixtures i would say a good ballpark would be maybe 40, 45 mm -hmm. these projects start out with, oh, I'm only going to work on that little bit. But then as you start opening things up, you're like, well, we should probably just take that out too. The snowball effect. And, right, mm -hmm. Exactly. The, the snowball effect, as Bridget mm -hmm. says, because then you got to do the boring stuff like the ceilings and retexturing. And maybe it needs new LED lights run. Now you got electrician work. So there's a lot of stuff you don't see in the renovation mm -hmm. that really add to the scope of the project and the budget. Absolutely. It's always good to have that extra in the, in the funds. Bridget, I know you worked on a big project recently. Tell us about that. So this was a big project out in the Red Tail community in Sorrento, Florida. And this particular home, it was a full total 
gut renovation of the entire home, flooring and everything. Ripped out the old fireplace in the formal living room, had an old style ceiling details with the beams and so forth. Took all of those out, made it a little bit more modern, but with a little bit of a, a transitional feel to it. Introduced a lot of custom features, a lot of luxury finishes, custom made kitchen cabinetry. And this house was built in? That house was built in 2004, I believe. Which doesn't seem that long ago. No. But we're, you know, I don't want to date ourselves here, but that's almost 20 years ago, people. And the style has changed. It's evolved. The word transitional, we've used that a lot in different Parade of Homes videos because you can't get rid of all the Mediterranean, all the columns, all the heavy stone. And you don't really want to. You want to show that pure design, but just bring it transitional up to today's a little bit more crisp, clean lines. All right, so Bridget, back to some tips for people that are watching this and wanting to take this on, but they're a little bit scared. I know a lot of people cruise those websites like house.com and all the right. fancy houses. Uh, what are some ways people could bring their ideas to someone like you to get that project started? Depending on how a client is comfortable, whether they utilize Pinterest or just create kind of a swipe file, so to speak, of things that inspire them. I always like to refer my, my clients to Lux Interiors. That's an awesome source for getting great inspiration for different ideas throughout the home. And the thing I also like is that it's things that are not as common. Just getting those ideas to spark your interest. Absolutely. All right, now this was a house that I saw about six months ago, and this was not something Bridget worked on, but it's just kind of a generic example of an older Windermere home in a great neighborhood of lots of trees and big lot, and had some light renovation done, which really helped it sell for a premium price. You can see the home it sits on a gorgeous lot. We actually stood in this driveway with like 30 realtors and their clients waiting to get into the open house one by one. And as we toured, you could sense it still had that 1990s uh, vibe going on, but it had the paint, right? And it had some little built-ins and, and just the door casings and the white and the woods. It all kind of worked together to really give you the impression that there's definitely been some updates here. Not a full gut job, everything completely brand new, but way more livable than some of these tired, heavy, Tuscan, mm -hmm. dark Mediterranean homes. I think that added to the appeal of the property. And check out what it listed for, 1.25. And then part of this is the hysteria of that time period, but look what it sold for, 1625. Wow. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah. That just shows you when you take the blueprint of what people want. I can't tell you how many people say, I want acreage, I want a pool, I want a big yard, I want space around my homes. Well, all that stuff was built in a different time period. Most of the new stuff is closer together and it's new construction and it's further out. So you gotta pay for location, then bring it up to today's standards. All right, what are some simple things that someone could do even without hiring an interior designer to kind of transform a room, a space? It's interesting, I tell people my actual degree is in human environmental sciences with a major in interior design. So it, it involves a lot of how, you know, our spaces affect us and the how- The energy. We, yes, exactly. Yes. So color is a big thing. So I say, look at colors that inspire you. Whether you're bringing that in through your walls, don't be afraid to go a dark color. It actually is surprising the opposite effect of what most people think. Dark colors recede and make a space feel bigger. Okay. Yeah, I, I painted my studio this dark gray. I see. But it's got good energy to it, especially mm -hmm. when you light mm -hmm. up all these LED lights. It's yeah. kind of fun. So if someone bought a brand new construction home and they just don't have the vision, can they hire you to walk through the home and help them with ideas? Absolutely. I will work with a client and their builder to pull finishes together, even do architectural plan reviews with the architect. You know, understanding the client's way of living in their home, bringing in the interior designer often helps bring in that additional viewpoint at a deeper level to know if a space is laid out properly, if traffic's going to flow, different viewpoints from one room to another. And of course, is furniture going to fit nicely in a room? Even building a custom home where you're doing mm -hmm. the architectural design and figuring out not just what the builder's going to build, but what's going to go in that room. Mm -hmm. And I think it can really help that client sometimes to visualize what's the space going to look like and helps the builder focus on building the home. And then they also have that expert advising them on what's going to go in after. Anything else you want to add, Bridget? 
just thank you for having me. Whether there's people wanting to understand more about renovating a home, you know, if it makes sense versus building a new home, I'm happy to help as well as furniture for full service interiors. And thank you for joining us on another studio session here in Orlando Property Advisors headquarters, talking about interior design and renovating to sell. Be sure and subscribe to this channel and give us a like and stay tuned for more studio podcast videos. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.